Workshop in a box comprises two suitcases, containing an infrared and a UV-vis spectrometer, a rucksack containing the IR spectrometer power supply, a laptop and teaching materials, and a box containing samples for use in the workshop. If any of these items are missing or damaged, use the phone number provided with your booking to report the problem. The IR spectrometer is dealt with in a separate video. Setting up the UV-vis spectrometer is quicker and more straightforward than the IR spectrometer as it does not need to be turned on ahead of time to warm up. The suitcase contains all parts of the UV-vis spectrometer. Push it in at the end of each clasp to release the lid, watching your fingers as you do so. Carefully remove the spectrometer from its foam padding. Remove the power supply, which is in two separate pieces. Connect the two pieces together and then connect the power supply to the rear of the spectrometer and switch it on at the wall socket. Press and hold the red and black power button to turn on the spectrometer and the screen will light up. Note that this is not a touch screen. The spectrometer is controlled by the buttons and the keypad. Press 1 for the application screen. We will return to this screen in order to make our measurements, but first we need to understand how to prepare the samples. Samples are prepared inside containers called cuvettes. A cuvette has two frosted and two clear sides. Whenever you handle the cuvette, ensure you only hold it by the frosted sides. Make sure the cuvette is not wet or otherwise dirty on the outside, as this will interfere with measurements. If it is, put it aside and get a new clean one. To prepare your sample, fill your cuvette outside the machine to avoid spills. Fill the cuvette to a point just below the arrow on the side. For the workshop, you need to run samples at a variety of concentrations to construct a calibration curve. This is the first thing to do. If you're given the wavelength at which to run your calibration curve, then you can proceed straight to the single wavelength application and skip the next step. If you do not know the wavelength to use for your calibration curve, you can run a full spectrum of the sample by using the wave scan method. To perform the wave scan, press 3 and enter your own start and end wavelength. Here we are entering a start wavelength of 400 nanometers and an end wavelength of 950 nanometers. Use the arrow keys to select absorbance mode and then the green button to confirm your entries. Our sample has a visible color, so we know it absorbs in the visible part of the spectrum. Your students will have made up a blank sample containing only the solvent you use to make up your solutions. A measurement of the blank sample should always be run before any sample containing the analyte. This ensures that no absorption from the solvent will interfere with measurements of the analyte. Place the sample in the correct orientation into the chamber. Take care to insert the cuvette as shown here with the clear sides orientated from the front to the back of the unit. This allows the beam to pass through the sample. Make sure to insert the cuvette in the right hand side of the sample chamber as shown here and not the left. Press the blue button marked 0A 100% T to run your blank sample measurement. Then replace the blank sample with a real sample containing your analyte. Press the green button to scan and find the maximum absorbance. This is a single value wavelength which will be used to measure the remaining spectra for the calibration curve and the unknown samples. If at any point you do not observe a peak, repeat these steps extending the wavelength range. Press the red button to return to the application screen. We have either been given or have just determined the wavelength at which to run our samples to build the calibration curve. So we can now enter the single wavelength application by pressing 1. Enter the wavelength you wish to measure the absorbance at. In this case, it is 824 nanometers, but the value will vary depending on the workshop. Check the teacher folder for further guidance. Press the green button to save your result. You have now set the spectrometer with the required wavelength of light. The laser in the spectrometer will emit light at this single wavelength and will measure the absorbance of light by the sample. 
Take your prepared samples and place them into the cuvette holders as shown here. Take your blank sample first of all and record a background measurement by pressing the blue button marked 0A 100% T. It should record 0, 0.000 in the absorbance window. Once the background measurement has run, carefully remove the cuvette from the chamber and replace it with your first sample. It's important to know the concentrations of each sample, so be careful to note down the order in which you record the measurements. To run your sample, press the green button and you will see a number appear in the absorbance box. Take a note of this number, as it is the absorbance value which you will need to plot on the calibration curve of absorbance against concentration. You do not need to run a blank background sample between each measurement, so you can now move on to your next sample. Remove the current sample from the chamber carefully and replace it with your next sample and press the green button to run the spectrum. Repeat this step until you have run all your samples, remembering to take note of the absorbance each time. Once you have run all your samples, press the red button to take you back to the main screen. To turn off the spectrometer, press and hold down the power button. Remove any cuvette samples from the unit and close the two folding trays at the front. To clean the cuvettes, please use water to rinse them and either dispose of them or keep them for future use at your school. Used cuvettes do not need to be returned to the university. Turn off and remove the power supply from the wall socket, then unplug it from the back of the unit. Clean the keypad and screen with an alcohol wipe or with IPA and a tissue as shown here. Place the spectrometer carefully back into the suitcase, followed by the two separated pieces of the power supply. and close the lid of the suitcase, making sure the two clips at the front engage and the clasps on either side close completely.